So I tried not getting sick, but I ended up getting sick anyways, which means I probably shouldn't be narrating. But hey, I don't care because narrating is something I enjoy doing. And I'm pretty sure you guys don't mind me uploading a battle, even though I haven't uploaded in like the past three days or so. But yeah, um, how's everybody doing? Uh, hopefully y'all doing better than I am. Uh, because I said I'm sick. It's spring and I'm sick. Uh, does that happen to anybody else? Because I like never get sick during winter, but always get sick during spring and summer. I don't know, is it just me? But yeah, anyways, I got this pretty fun Yu Yu battle that I had against somebody on the Smoga on Wi-Fi Battle Finder. I'm um, looking at threats on his side of the field. Uh, actually, he has his whole team is a threat. Like, if he plays his team properly enough, I'm gonna get smashed, so I really just have to watch out for basically everything on his team, to be perfectly honest. So, he's gonna be leading off with the Frostlass, as I'm gonna be leading off with my Amoongus, and knowing that the taunt is way too obvious, and the Ice Beam is also way too obvious as well, I'm actually gonna stay in and go for the Hidden Power Fire, as he actually ends up getting a Lair of Spikes. Unfortunately though, Hidden Power Fire is nowhere near to a KO, but he ends up getting the Cursed Body Hacks, then expecting him to go for another Lair of Spikes, I'm actually gonna go for the Spore. As this turn, I'm gonna switch on directly on to my Kingdra because I am Specs, and from the looks of his team, nothing really appreciates a modest choice Specs Draco Meteor as he actually pulls a switch into his Cough Fagrigus. Uh, he's actually gonna stay in, I guess, maybe thinking I would be the Dragon Dance var variant of Kingdra because from the looks of his team, nothing can really stop it after two Dragon Dances, so it really isn't too big of a deal that he left in his Cofagagus on my Kingdra. Unfortunately though, I am Specs and I straight up destroy the Cofagagus, which is really good because now if I can get rid of the Frostlass, then my Claydoss should be able to freely rapid spin on something on his team. As he brings in the Roserade, obviously I don't want to take a Giga Drain or a Sleep Powder, so I switch directly into my Snorlax. As he ends up going for the Sleep Powder, he is then going to go for the Leaf Storm. It turns out that he's Life Orb, and look at how much damage that did to a max Special Defense max HP Snorlax. Good lord, Roserade. That thing is powerful. I believe its max special attack is like 383, then the base power of Leaf Storm is like 120 along with Life Orb. Uh, Roserade is a threat, definitely, which means I need to need to keep my Snorlax around to be able to keep that Roserade from destroying my team. As I go for the Sleep Talk, I believe I pull the Body Slam, then pull the Whirlwind as he switched into the Rhyperior. I Whirlwind him out to the Frostlass, and here I'm going to make a pretty a pretty awesome play, in my opinion. I'm actually going to predict myself to wake up, and I'm going to go for the Rest. As I do wake up, I get the Rest as he actually leaves in his Frostlass, more than likely just wanting to get up his third layer of Spikes, which really isn't uh, too bad of a play. But this turn, I'm going to switch into my Kingdra on the off chance that he did wake up. I want to apply pressure to him because I know that he knows that Specs Kingdra is a giant threat to his team. So, expecting him to go for the Destiny Bond, I'm actually going to go straight for the Draco Meter now. The reason I did this is because 1, his last Ghost type is gone, which means my Clay Doll can now freely Rapid Spin, and 2, he did not get up his third layer of spikes, and I know from prior battles that that third layer of spikes can actually be very, very game changing. So it's really good for me, even though yes, I did lose a heavy hitter, I'm really not too worried about it. And on the double down, I'm going to switch into my Victini, expecting him to bring in Rosary, thinking I would want to bring in Clay Doll to Rapid Spin. As he does do that, I'm going to go for the U-turn as he makes a very good play, predicts that, brings in his Zapdos, as I do practically nothing to it, but this is my perfect, perfect opportunity to bring in my Clay Doll, Clay Claw. <laughs> I don't know English, well I apologize everybody, but as I bring in my clay doll, I know I can easily take one life orb, hidden power, grass or ice, as I do take it, I'm going to be able to go for the rapid spin, and the reason why I call it clay doll useless is because honestly I'm not a big fan of clay doll, but after this battle, I did get some newfound respect for it, because it actually comes really in handy being able to keep that Rhyperior at bay, which can kind of do some work to my team, especially if I lose my Suicune and clay doll. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, he's going to bring in the Rhyperior. I thought that the U-turn was way too obvious, so I expected him to go for the Vault Switch, but no, he does make the safe and smarter play, switching directly into Rhyperior, takes v Cray like it was nothing. Well, then again, that was actually a pretty good amount of damage, considering that I'm Scarfed and not Bandit, but either way, this is my good chance to bring in Clay Doll and get on my rocks, as he makes a very, very good play, knowing that I would want to bring in Clay Doll to get on my rocks. He's actually going to double switch into his Roserade. Obviously, I don't want to take a Sleep Powder or a Leaf Storm, so I'm going to switch directly into my Snorlax, as he actually ends up going for the Sludge Bomb. And even Sludge Bomb does an easy, like, 20%, which is really impressive, considering that, again, I'm a Snorlax, and Snorlax is easily one of the best special walls in the UU tier. But this turn, expecting him to go for the rest, 
I'm actually going to switch into my Amoongus, but it turns out that he has Synthesis. Now, at the time of the battle, I did not know that Offensive Roserade carried Synthesis as the recovery move, so I thought he would go for the rest, and obviously, if I did know they carried Synthesis, I would have just left in Snorlax and gone for the Sleep Talk, but hey, that's some good information to know for future battles when I face more Offensive Roserades, right? So he's going to go for Leaf Storm, and those Leaf Storms are doing way too much damage to my Snorlax because honestly, I need this Snorlax to be able to keep Zapdos and Roserade at bay. So I'm just going to stand and go for the Sleep Talk as I'm able to pull the Whirlwind, Whirlwind amount into the uh, Zapdos, which is actually really good because I'm thinking that maybe I can take a Bolt Switch or a Thunderbolt Bolt Switch combination, but he actually switches directly into his Rhyperior, which automatically tells me that he does not have the Bolt Switch, so that's going to be some good information for the remainder of the battle. As I go for the Seed Talk, I'm actually going to pull the Body Slam and get off a whole two points of damage on that Rhyperior, as I'm going to make a very, very risky play. I actually thought that he would go for the Stealth Rocks, that way when he did go for them, I would be able to wake up and go for the rest, but no, he goes straight for the Earthquake. Thankfully though, Snorlax is one bulky ass Pokemon and I'm going to be able to take the Earthquake with ease and I'm going to be able to rest up to full HP, which means now I can take more hits from Roserade and more hits from Zapdos, but knowing that this turn he might want to get up his rocks or just go for another Earthquake expecting me to stay in and go for the Sleep Talk, I'm actually going to switch directly into my Clay Doll because now this is my perfect, perfect opportune moment to finally get up my Stealth Rocks even though it's like halfway into the battle but either way I need to start wearing down that Roserade and that Zapdos because once I, get rid of, once I get rid of one of those two that means a lot of pressure will be taken off of my Snorlax considering that it is only that it's the only special wall on my team as it brings in the Roserade obviously I don't want to take a Sleep Powder or a Leaf Storm so I switch directly back out into Snorlax and I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed this that this is a bit repetitive but hey, it's fine. Uh, not too big of a deal. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this narration, even though I'm messing up a bit because like, I'm trying to breathe out of my nose and talk because my nose is stuffed up. Anyways, I'm just rambling and not really narrating the battle. What, what am I saying? Anyways, um, he makes a very, very risky play by bringing in the Manchow on my Snorlax. And luckily for me, I'm actually going to be able to sleep talk the Body Slam. Above that, I'm able to get the Paralysis, which honestly, I didn't really need the Paralysis, but hey, that was a nice little addition to me being able to pull the Body Slam and get off a heavy hit on this Amo um, not Amoongus, wow, on this Manchow. As I switch into my Amoongus, knowing that I can easily take a high jump kick, I'm going to do that. Unfortunately for him, the fall on turn, he ends up getting paralyzed. Now, that Paralysis was actually a bit crucial because if he had got off that extra bit of damage with the high jump kick, then... I wouldn't have stayed in with my Amoongus on the Zapdos because at the amount of HP that I'm at, I know I can easily take one Heat Wave even if this thing was modest, which I highly doubt because that would be a little bit odd to run modest Life Orb Zapdos when it's really good to have the uh, Timid Nature for the extra speed and all that should not agree. As I'm able to take the Heat Wave, I'm going to be able to go for the Spore, which is just awesome because now this Zapdos is basically useless as I'm going to be able to get a free switch into my Victini and here I was actually very very close to going for the U-turn thinking he would want to switch out but once I really thought about it with Rocks being up and Zapdos being put to sleep it's basically useless to him so he really doesn't have much use for it which is why I said it was useless okay anyways <laughs> he's going to bring in the Roserade obviously thinking that I'm banded unfortunately for him though I'm actually scarfed and if he had brought in the Rhyperior that would have just dragged out the battle a bit longer so the fact that he just brought in Roserade as opposed to Rhyperior right just sped up the process of the battle and I'm able to knock out the Roserade as he brings in his last which is this Rhyperior. Right this means I cannot get a free switch into my Suicune which I did not get to use this entire battle and even though his whole team was very threatening I was able to work around it and pull out the victory and I believe that was a 5-0 in my favor which I know might seem a little bit one-sided but once you really think about it my opponent made some good plays and um, I did get really lucky with the Sleep Talk on my Snorlax but yeah, in the end, I thought it was a pretty good battle. Hopefully, y'all did enjoy. And if you did, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe to my content. Do what you want. Do what you please. And all that. And yeah, I'm out of here, guys. Uh, later.